Hi, so this is Craig Helen from BexMedia.net. This week we've had a couple of great work experience students in and they wanted to create the classic ink drop effect to be used in After Effects as a composite tool. Uh, we didn't want to use anything from stock footage that we found on that because we thought it would be interesting to try it ourselves. We've learned a few things in the process and we thought we'd make a little tutorial on how best to do this so that hopefully will help you guys out and we might give you a couple of bits of stock footage for free. So one of the first things we needed to do was to get the right vessel to do our ink drop in. We started off by using a large glass cafetiere uh, for coffee, however it was, still didn't provide the width that we needed for our canvas, uh, so we actually ended up going and buying a large cylindrical glass vase. Uh, the important thing to work out there is to make sure the glass itself is quite uniform and flat and straight and it doesn't have any texture to the surface because obviously that would distort the ink drop that you're filming inside. So the next part was judging what inks we needed to use. So our first thought was let's use food colouring because it's kind of the thing you might think might drop well through, uh, through water and through other liquid. However, when we did it, so we did it with a, a, a normal bit of food colouring that you get from, from a supermarket. Um, I don't know if it makes a difference on different types of one, but what we found with this one is it was too viscous, it was too gloopy, um, and even if we mixed it, it wasn't quite the right effect. When it was uh, unmixed, it didn't fall through the liquid properly. It didn't get that classic shape, a sort of almost like a, a inverse mushroom shape that you want to get with an ink drop. It kind of glooped through a little bit more like um, a lava lamp. Uh, so that wasn't right. So what we did instead, uh, well, we tried uh, mixing it with some water. And although that made the viscosity correct, you lost a lot of the definition. It started blending in with the water more. Uh, so you lost some of the colouring and some of the texturing between the different uh, parts of the, uh, of the ink. So that wasn't right. So what did we do instead? Well, it just so happened that our printer broke a few days ago. Uh, and when I say our printer broke, our printer started not liking some of the compatible inks we've been giving it. And uh, HP, yeah, you know, they, they try and make you buy their own ink. And by the looks of things, they've succeeded. We've gone on this morning and we've had to buy our ink. But what that's meant is we're left with a load of ink cartridges, compatible ink cartridges. Um, now, it was a brainwave of, uh, of our, one of our um, editors, Harry, uh, to go through and blow some of the ink out of this. Now, I'm not gonna do it now because I'll make a whole mess over this table, but uh, here's what Harry did earlier. So Harry's managed to extract some ink from the, um, from the, uh, the cartridge. And this, is the perfect, perfect liquid. We've dropped this in a few times and we'll show you some footage of that. Um, we've dropped it in a few times, it's worked really, really well, um, but we haven't filmed it yet, so that's our next thing. Um, now, with regard to the actual filming that we're gonna do, we're gonna shoot it all on an FS700 using an Odyssey 7Q. Um, what that allows us to do is we're going to shoot it in slow-mo, we're going to be able to go up to 100 frames using the uh, FS700's uh, raw output into the Odyssey 7Q, which gives us a fantastic image afterwards to work with. Uh, none of that AVC HD stuff that's in camera on, on the um, FS700, which is great. Uh, we're going to try and mount our camera the other way up, so we have more, uh, more uh, width in the image or depth in the image or whatever in the image, uh, basically allowing us a bigger canvas which will sort of allow us to get that central channel really, really well and, and in the highest definition possible to be able to use in, in, in our compositing tools. So that's the next part of our challenge. Let's see how we get on. So the ink drop exercise we've just gone through went really well. There were a few things that we didn't anticipate along the way, so I think we should probably tell you about those now. Firstly, uh, making sure that uh, your Formica backdrop that we use for this, which is a really great piece of, uh, piece of material to be able to use as a backdrop for most things, but it started lifting up at the edges and we had to use a hell of a lot of gaffer tape. Make sure you've got loads of that around available. Um, secondly, what we found with the glass uh, vessel that we put it in, our vase, 
Um, every time we had to go and fill it up, because obviously after every take we had to pull the water out and, and fill it back up again, um, there was a water on the edge of the vase and around the front of it. So we had to use a, um, a microfiber cloth, which was just one of, out of one of our old lens packs for that. So that worked quite well and it was, and it was quite speedy. One of the things that we did have to do is wait. Every take we had to wait quite a bit because we needed to make sure the water had stopped moving or as near as damn it stopped moving inside the glass uh, so that when we dropped the ink in uh, it didn't all get all turbulent really um, straight away. You might have a gradual rotation which actually looks quite nice and can produce a nice effect but we didn't want it slopping about all over the place so we had to do a fair amount of waiting on the shoot. The lighting that we used for the shoot uh, was fairly intense. We've got uh, a Kina Flow up here, Kina Flow Diva, and we've got a whole bunch of uh, little LED lights around as well. Um, and that, uh, even for a small, uh, for a small piece on this on this sort of product background, we did need all of that light to bring out all the details of of the drips as as, as they went through the water. Um, you could probably do it with a smaller setup, um, maybe a cheaper setup, but you'd, everything would have to be a lot closer in, a lot more focused. Uh, but we also like being able to see around the edges and have a little bit more wiggle room when we were moving the, um, the vessel around as well. Uh, originally we started shooting on an 85mm uh, lens on our Super 35mm sensor on our FS700 and that, that produced a good result um, but it wasn't cropped in enough. We didn't get quite the detail that we were looking for so then we switched out to 135mm Samyang uh, Cine Prime which uh, did a really excellent job. Um, in the links down below there will be a whole host of files that we're going to provide for you free of charge uh, just because we're nice people and uh, we want you to play with this as much as we are. Um, so they will be read, they will be untreated but they will be pre-matted uh, so they will have an alpha channel embedded in them so you can use them straight away in any of your projects, change the hue, do whatever you want with them but I'd love to see some of the results as well so if you produce anything with some of these things, I mean I don't care about copyright on these but if you'd like to link us back so we can refer to them in some of our further tutorials that would be really great. So that's Craig Callan signing off for BexMedia.net and uh, have fun with the footage we gave you. Yeah.